Okay, this is the assembly of the telescoping shaft for the Monster Castle uh, model uh, printers, uh, or as Bitref calls it, Metroplex, which is a nice name. Um, so you have your outer square tube. You've drilled four M uh, three millimeter holes on all four sides on one end and one through hole for M3, so this is generally 2.5 millimeters uh, that you can then tap for the threads to go through. This is your intermediate segment. Um, you've got four holes on all uh, on, on both ends and you'll see why in a second. Um, but in this case you see one, there's, there's a little plastic pad here because uh, I disassembled and I'm going to reassemble this in a second. <clears throat> and then you have the smallest, uh, the inner segment, uh, where you have the 4 millimeter round pin coming out the tip. You've got a 6 millimeter outer diameter, 4 millimeter inner diameter aluminum tube that's acting as a sleeve uh, to fit into this 7 millimeter outer uh, diameter square uh, square. Uh, tube of aluminum outside and I've locked the pins in with a small M3 set screw uh, that I then that I then um, filed flat to be flush with the, with the top. <clears throat> On the other end you have again all four of these holes that are drilled three millimeters uh, pretty close to the edge. Um, how close they get will essentially determine how far you can extend the telescoping shaft when it's fully extended. Now, what you want to do is you want to start with your middle segment. Um, you want to start with one end which you'll determine is the front end where the small segment will come out of. You take one of these little plastic pads, um, the the files are in the uh, GitHub repository. It's basically 0.4 millimeter thick with a 3 millimeter uh, cylinder uh, that's basically 1 millimeter tall. What you're going to do is you're going to put it in the square tube until it gently sits in with the with the pin in the hole. And you can use a tool guarantee that it's sitting nice and flush. Then you're going to do the same. So some of these are a little bit bent, so you have to be careful when you do this because otherwise you're going to get the, uh, the one that you fit in originally falling out. So this is why I'm being very gentle and careful here. Okay, now we have all four of these little pads on the inside. You want to make sure that they're as flush as possible. Um, and then on the outer two, on, on the innermost segment, which you'll, no, which you'll have potentially noticed, is that I've, I have filed the edge, the leading edge here, so that it will actually flush the pads towards the outside of the tube. Um, doesn't always work, but you have to try uh, to do it because you want those pads in correctly. You can see it's coming up. And I'm not going to push it all the way through, but I am going to push it until I can get those pads properly locked in. You can see sometimes they the uh, it's difficult to see on the camera, um, but you see, sometimes the, the the pad will actually bend a little bit as you're pushing it forward, and that's how you get the bends that you saw earlier. Um, so. 
just have to be very careful to make sure that they still flatten through and uh, come in to compress against the pa against the tube once it's through the difficult part of fitting it through. When it gets a little stuck like that, I take some pliers and push from the back. And you can see one of them came out. It's unfortunate because I wanted that one in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it back in. going to gently insert this pad that jumped out. I'm going to make sure that I get the pin for the pad correctly positioned before I try to push it further in. And there we go, I lost another one. Oh boy. Sometimes it's a little frustrating. If you can dry and do sometimes, just to come at it from the other side, fit it with pin on the outside, just push it in with a square tube, and that did not work, does not want to fit in. So flip it upside down. Oh dear. Now I've got two of them to replace. Oh joy. Put the bottom one back in. The trick, the trick here might be to actually use just a dash of glue from the outside into the hole to keep the um, the pad properly stuck in there and to be a little bit more aggressive with the file to get it properly fitting in there I'm going to try and go ahead with just these three I've got one that's folding now. Okay, so I was struggling a little too much, and I found a better strategy. So, um, I've got three of them in there already. Uh, two of them opposite. So you start off with just one on top, one on bottom, for example, or left and right, doesn't matter. Uh, you fit them in. You, I had to refile this to be a little. Bit, I had to be a little bit more aggressive on the filing here uh, for the sh for the, the the slope to be better. And for the third one, what I did is what I'm going to do here. So this is the one where I don't have one. Uh, I had to refile a little bit because the set screw was still sticking out a little bit and causing issues. So what you do is you put your pad with the peg sticking up top. You fit it in while the sh shaft is extended a little bit past where you want it to be. You put it out like so. And you, you see you have just the just the, the, the part of the peg that's sticking out. So you, then you push it in past the point where 
it'll fit in. And then you can actually just push it in with a thin tool. And when you bring it back out, the peg, so it's, it's actually coming loose here. Um, but the idea is that the peg will actually just go back in. You hold it in while you push the shaft back against it. I'm struggling a little bit with the top one here. The screw is obviously very hard to, to file, and I don't want to file it down too much because otherwise it loses effectiveness. So I can do. So I didn't. I didn't manage to get it in. Okay. All right. So here's the top one. It does not want to go in. Okay, the top one's in. And I need to put this in. Ah. Okay, so I can only do three of these at a time. It's not the end of the world, and I'll show you why on the other end in a second. So, on the other end, you're going to do exactly what I just did, but in reverse, meaning you're going to put, take the, the pin, you're going to put this on here, like so, see it's sticking out, and the pin is there, aligned, and you're going to do the same for all four sides of this. So, there, it's three, and four, if I can get it. Now, these little printed pads are very thin. This is a regular PT. Um, if you have a material that's a little bit more slippery, like nylon, and you're comfortable printing with it uh, for such a thin and small part, go right ahead. Um, I just use PT because it's what I had on hand. I don't have nylon. And then you see it's all nice and tight against it, so I can just push it in. And important to note, on the other side, the three, the three that I had have not moved. They're still there. Because I didn't extend beyond where they come off, and that's a little difficult at first, um, and that's not good. Oh wow, I actually took the pin out. But here, I need a little bit of strength, but it's actually nice and smooth, and there's zero torsional play between the two tubes which is what I really want. And the other added benefit of these little pads is that if I extend to the point where they intersect, then I can't I can't extend the, the tube any further. It locks it in place. So that's the middle and inner segment. So now we're going to do the outer segment. So mine is a little bit dirty because I had leftover grease from a previous attempt where I didn't have the pads in, so it's not as it's it's a bit greasy um but if you start fresh it should be fine this is why i have some of the, some of these pads have grease on them because they were in there so again i put one i'm going to put two And these are unfortunately a little bit annoying to get in the right place when you're not super delicate with it. I could have printed bigger pads that would have aligned better in, in this, but the uh, the idea was simply to take the one pad design and just fit it everywhere. That works, um, even for the lock protection for the for, to lock it in so it doesn't overextend. It works just fine. There's no need to worry too much about that acting as because even if it comes in, even if it is inserted at an angle, it will not move.
Okay. This one I can't move out of the way. Okay. Okay. That one's in. So I'm going to do the same trick I did earlier. Except this time it's going to be with the metal segment instead of the uh, inner one. Obviously you can see I've got the Oops, middle segment that came loose. Okay, so do I have any one of them? No, I don't. Okay. So I'm going to put this in between the outer and inner segments. You can see as I push it in, I'm trying to make it lock in place here so that so that the pressure of the outer tube coming out basically lock it in to its proper hole I'm not sure I know the joke about engine about guys in holes not being able to find them mainly uh, ouch okay that's in one so I'm going to do two right here that's two Okay, that's two. Nope, that's one because the other one came loose. Great. Do not see that. Okay. So the important thing here is that if you put them, put all the holes at the same depth, then they all, they're all going to lock in at the same point in time. You can see this one is a bit further back, which means I have to push it further in, and this one came loose as a result. There we go. Now that one's locked in, that one's locked in. So now I can go in here and finalize this one. And then I'm going to do exactly what I did earlier with the innermost um, tube on the end. Um, because that's going to become critical to make sure that there's no slop in the rotation. Obviously, if you feel like the, rot the, the sliding action is a little too harsh, you're free to lubricate it, but I haven't found that to be necessary uh, with this design. Sometimes it just doesn't want to cooperate correctly. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Come on. tube a little bit again. And it's too far. Way too far. As you can imagine. Okay. Well then, now that that's done.
So one of them stayed in, two of them stayed in. It's quite good. Um, but you can tell, I don't know if you can tell, there's definitely slack here. So I'll try and fit the last one up here. There we go. Okay, that's better. Still a tiny bit of slop, but not, nothing rotational now because I have three out of the four. Which means I'm going to lock this down by doing the four on the other end. So here, I already have one. Which, again, like I said, two. And obviously my fingers are getting full of grease when I do this. Um, it's not ideal, but there we go. That's three and four. I have to push it in hard to get it past the hard points at the front. And now, Voila. This is going to be as smooth as your um, tubes are. Obviously a little bit of lubrication won't hurt. You can see I've got, uh, unfortunately I've got some traces of plier marks and etc. on mine. So it's not the smoothest motion. Um, it's not hard either. There's no significant hard points um, and it works just fine. Now the last touch, um, that you want to do so there's a printed cap um, I've got an M4 screw locked in place with a nut really tight so that basically it doesn't rotate by itself at all then the then I filed the flat on the threads and locked it in place with a small set screw M3 in this case um, the bearings here the the u-joint here has bearings in the cube that you so one that goes through and two on the outsides with the four millimeter pins um, there's tiny bit the, the tiniest bit of slop I, I would I would imagine it's probably like a half degree and it's only because of the play of the bearing fitting in the pocket that's a bit loose um, it's just the tolerance to fit the, the bearings in uh, you can try and play with that on the STL file or carefully glue them in, doesn't matter. So then you basically just lock the top on with a long M3 screw. And voila, that's not moving. This is not going to go anywhere. Um, now you, the, the top can't come out the back. And then you want to fit the other end onto the other U joint on here. And uh, you want, uh oh, that is not good. Why? Why did I do that? Okay, have to start again. Okay, so lesson learned. Don't try to fit it on with the tube fully retracted. Easier to do it when it's extended so you can actually grab onto your inner segment directly. Um, push your pin into the shaft here. One thing to take particular note of is to make sure that 
you are aligned on both sides, right? With the U joint, you don't want it to be. You don't want one to be on the other side. On, on to, you you want both of these to actually have exactly the same alignment um, on both ends, because otherwise you're going to have issues with the torque transmission. If you have the the U joints that are parallel, that are actually like mate matching, so this is parallel with the other end, um, then you then you have um, a good transmission with no hiccups, but if it's if there's any angle in there, you're going to have inconsistent uh, transmission of torque to the shaft, which is not what we want here. So in my case, the problem is that the flats do not line up, so I'm going to have to finish this. I'll put the flat here because this one I cannot adjust. Since I've got to screw through the actual uh, square tube. And actually, I'm a little concerned about this. Okay. On the flat or not? I thought I was, but apparently I wasn't. Okay. Make sure you're properly on the flat when you tighten that in. And again, you're threading in plastic, so don't over tighten this. There we go, that's solid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to take the cap off on this end and adjust the rotation based on the M4 screw with the nut to make sure that the two the two U joints are properly lined up. Now for the for the U joints, you'll notice that look one is clear, one is blue. Uh, there's there's really no difference. It's just that's how I printed it because I simply just didn't have. Um, enough material in one color but there's absolutely no difference it's, they're both PT um, and I'm going to have to undo this to be able to get to the screw with the nut on there so you see just M4 screw with a flat a nut um, and I basically just have to loosen this a little bit so that the flats actually line up so I've got my flat, it is, where's my flat, my flat is here, okay. so my flat is basically perpendicular to where the screw holes are, so I will do this. is tighten the nut, not tighten the screw. If I tighten the screw, I move the flat. Wow, I cannot move this, the, the screw anymore, one way or the other. So, this goes back on. back on. I want to make sure that it's properly flush flat um, given that I'm tightening onto a screw. I don't want to give it any angle. I mean the U joint will take care of it, but I don't want to have the U joint correct something if it doesn't need to be corrected. There we go. Ooh. What is going on here? Oh dear.
Looks like I need a fresh piece of file, on a fresh filing bit on the flat here. 